right, welcome to Liberty Me's interview series, The Time Offensive. I am your host, Tiffany Madison. Today we welcome Austin Peterson, CEO of Stonegate LLC and founder of the online magazine, The Libertarian Republic. Thank you for joining us today, Austin. Hi, Tiffany. Thanks for having me on. Great to see you. It's great to see you. So uh, first things first, let's talk 2016. So uh, recent polls suggest that Florida Governor Jeb Bush ties with Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky for the Republican nomination. Those two candidates represent opposing factions of the GOP wing, each fighting pretty much for what remains of the party's soul. If these two perceive Bulbert as the nominee, what political leverage do you foresee each candidate using against the other? Well, that's a great question. I mean, I think that the the really the only weakness that Jeb Bush brings to the table is his last name, because if you look at his record as governor of Florida, he had a very good record as governor of California in terms of a conservative record. He's also got a lot of, I mean, he's got the support of the establishment, I would say. He's sort of seen as the guy who took up the reins when Chris Christie faltered as the establishment pick. But he's got a great record on things like immigration, which libertarians tend to um, you know, have a more free market uh, viewpoint on, and Jeb Bush brings that to the table. So he's got tons of leverage there. He's also got the Karl Rove factor. So Karl Rove would most likely be supporting a, a Jeb Bush, and Karl Rove is like the bete noir of the conservative movement, and he would most likely be in Jeb Bush's corner. So if you're looking at what Jeb Bush has, he has the establishment uh, credentials and all of the establishment powers lining up behind him, but he's also got a great record in terms of actual limited government uh, governance. And so um, the problem is, is that going up against someone like Rand Paul, Rand Paul is seen as sort of the consummate outsider. He may be someone that the libertarian movement supports, the outsiders support, the Tea Party supports, but he doesn't have that sort of entrenched um, support that Jeb Bush does. Now, Rand Paul brings something different to the table. He brings something new and exciting. I think that the thing that Rand Paul really brings to the table is the excitement of the youth vote. So Barack Obama, when he sailed to victory in 2008, originally he did so on the back of having the establishment base sewed up after Hillary Clinton had had uh, taken a back seat, and also being able to turn out the young voters at the polls. So if Rand Paul is going to beat someone like Jeb Bush, it's going to have to be focused on the fact that we're trying to avoid a political dynasty, and it's going to have to uh, ride on the back that, of the idea that Rand Paul can really get turn out the young people to vote for him, which I think is actually very important because when it comes to actually winning the presidency, you have to have the ground game. A lot of people give a lot of credit to having the establishment set up, winning the primary nomination, but once the primary nomination is sewn up and it's a battle between the um, elected leaders of the two different parties, then it becomes an issue of going door to door. And who goes door to door? It's not usually the elderly, it's usually the young voters, the young people. So when Barack Obama was running in 2008, Twice young people came to my door to get me to come and turn out and vote for Barack Obama. No one ever showed up to get me to vote for John McCain or for Mitt Romney in 2012. So Rand Paul is going to have to make the case that he can bring in young people and possibly some liberal voters uh, because of his stance on things like drones. Yeah, that actually, that's a very valid point, and it kind of brings me to my next question because, you know, his grassroots support among the, you know, evangelists that his father inspired has really waned, and some argue that he, you know, plays politics too much, you know, he's not a purist enough for some, um, others argue he's too socially conservative, others feel betrayed that he, you know, um, you know, bounced on his father to support Mitt Romney. Mm -hmm. Since 2012, you know, the RNC has reformed its nomination process. I mean, they've sought to limit GOP mm -hmm. debates tie caucuses directly to their convention delegates. They've, you know, uh, pretty much damaged grassroots efforts to defy party mandates. Mm -hmm. you know, the rules for electing a candidate now benefit the well-funded party favorites like Bush, mm -hmm. and Ron Rand Paul is the outlier. Without that grassroots support for a liberty-minded candidate that his father was able to churn, does he mm -hmm. actually stand a chance against Bush and his corporate backers? I think he does, and the reason why is because I think that what happens is that you have a sort of vocal uh, minority of people on the internet that are willing to express their dissatisfaction with Rand Paul. But the thing is, is do you ever meet those people out at any of our events? Do you ever talk to any of those people? Do you ever see them? No. All you ever hear is the people on the internet who are crying, crying and whining and complaining. The butthurt basement dwellers, I think. I think we like to call them, uh, but these people are actually, I would say that these people are mostly inconsequential because these are the type of people who usually don't involve themselves in politics anyway. It's a, it's a game of ideas for them, which I certainly can respect, uh, but the type of people who actually get out and go to meetings and who get involved with politics are the type of people who usually care enough 
to uh, to really think through their positions if they're actually going to get out in the streets and work for them. That's not always the case, uh, but I think that for the uh, for you and I, when we're on Facebook and we're having debates with people within our own movement, there's the sort of uh, the angry vocal minority of people who are willing to denigrate Rand Paul and his positions because he's not like his father. But I see that as a very very vocal minority of people. So I think that in order to take on Jeb Bush, I think he does have a chance. But the problem is, is going to be, um, I, I don't think it's going to be a problem of money, because I do think that uh, Rand Paul will be able to uh, tap into vast networks of money. The, the only problem being, perhaps, that if Ted Cruz runs at the same time, which he's likely to do, Rand Paul would lose, perhaps, a large percentage of his donor base, the establishment donors that would back Ted Cruz. There's a lot of money in Texas. Uh, and that Texas money could could go to Ted Cruz. So I think that uh, that Rand Paul really has to face the the challenge is not to face down Jeb Bush. I think that a challenge to Jeb Bush only really comes later if the primary season is dragged out. Then Rand Paul will face a much more significant challenge because the way that the Republican National Committee, as you say, they changed the rules. However, they did recently also set a primary schedule that favors Rand Paul. We covered this at the Libertarian Republic. Uh, I believe it's Nevada, Iowa, South Carolina, New Hampshire. These are the early states in which the um, the nomination could theoretically be tied up by Rand Paul in the early states. However, as the the primary season wanes uh, wanes on, and as this as it goes um, into uh, states, the longer states like Missouri, where there's swing states, I think that he, uh, Rand Paul, would really face a larger challenge if it has to go to states like Florida, uh, where Jeb Bush obviously was the governor of Florida, and he could theoretically wrest it away from Rand Paul. So Rand Paul has an early advantage, knowing how the primary schedule works. He has a chance to get those delegates, but if the nomination isn't wrapped up soon, then it becomes more of a more of a game in play for Jeb Bush. Yeah, that's, that's actually a, a good insight, and it's interesting you bring up Florida because we are really in an interesting uh, kind of position with the Hispanic vote. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they significantly came out in support of George W. Bush, and then I think Romney got like 22, 27 percent of the vote. They're mm -hmm. a huge demographic now, and the GOP, if they seek to, you know, take that away from the Democrats, that whole voting block, they're going to have to appeal to the conservative side, the social conservative side to Hispanic voters. What would you think about, or how do you think the liberty movement would respond to a vice presidential candidate of Ted Cruz versus Marco Rubio if Rand Paul was the presidential nominee? Oh, I think that they would absolutely, overwhelmingly support that kind of a ticket because you would have the Tea Partier coalition going along with Ted Cruz. I think the Tea Partiers, like the, the strict Tea Partiers, tend to favor Ted Cruz a bit more than Rand Paul. And here's the problem. Remember Jeb Bush recently got in trouble with the conservative establishment for saying that illegal immigration was an act of love? When he said that, it it infuriated conservatives and it infuriated Tea Partiers, but libertarians and Democrats looked at that as, wow, Jeb Bush, that's fascinating. I think that's, that's something very exciting to hear. But the, remember, the Bushes have always been very good on immigration, mostly because they tend to have a lot of, uh, they speak uh, Spanish. They, um, the, George Bush was the governor of Texas. Uh, they have, they're married to uh, Latinas. They have Latino wives, and uh, they had Latina nannies growing up. And so the Bushes have been very good on immigration. But here's the problem. The Tea Party is not good on immigration. And so the problem is, is that the Tea Party most likely would support Rand Paul over Jeb Bush. Well, if you're trying to get Hispanics, the Bushes theoretically, from a practical politics standpoint, actually have a much better chance of capturing the, the um, Hispanic vote because the Bushes are out and proud about their um, uh, pro-immigration viewpoints. Now, Rand Paul can't be an out and proud uh, pro-immigration libertarian because the Tea Party who supports him is not pro-immigration. That is the problem with this situation because if you look at it from the, from an on-the-ground tactical standpoint, Rand Paul cannot lose his base of Tea Party anti-establishment conservatives. However, those people tend to be anti-immigration, though that is very much a turnoff to Hispanic voters, and so it's very much a problem that we'll have to deal with. Yeah, I think it's going to be a, a good sticking point in 2016. Um, so Senator Rand Paul, as we you know, were kind of discussing before, is in an extremely difficult position. He has to appease each of those ideologically shattered factions of the GOP, social conservatives versus neocon militarists versus the constitutionalist and libertarian wing. What do you think it would take for SOCONs and neocons both to support him? Is it that vice presidential candidate? Is it a policy switch? 
I mean, mm. what can he do to brand, to appeal to every single one of those factions without alienating any of them? Well, I don't think that Rand Paul will ever really um, be able to bring the neoconservatives along. The, the, the Cheneys are sort of his arch enemies because of what he said against Lynn Cheney when she was running for Senate. Uh, I think that uh, the Bushes will always oppose Rand Paul. I don't know that there, he will really ever be able to get the neocon vote unless he wins the general election, in which case I actually do think a lot of neoconservatives would support uh, Rand Paul over whoever the eventual Democratic uh, nominee is. However, that's not totally true because uh, there was an article in Politico recently about how Hillary Clinton, if she gets the nomination, she has embedded Wall Street support. A lot of Wall Street Republicans would support Hillary Clinton. Remember, she was a senator from the state of New York, and she has embedded uh, establishment support from the Republicans of New York who would see Rand Paul as an outsider. So that is an interesting little problem there. But if you're talking about uh, social conservatives, I think that social conservatives very much see Rand Paul as one of him and I, uh, one of them. And I don't think that it would be a problem to get the social conservative vote. I think social conservatives right now are tending to lean a little bit more towards the libertarian wing of the party. It's really the problem with the neoconservatives who are upset when they see Rand Paul doing things like filibustering the nomination of um, uh, Obama's drone memo author this morning. They don't like his filibuster uh, again drones, uh, Obama's drone killing of um, you know civilians. They don't like his national security policy because they fear that he may be like his father. They fear that he may be an isolationist is what they call him. But what I really think is going to be the issue is that libertarians are going to have to make peace with social conservatives and social conservatives are going to have to make peace with libertarians. The real struggle, the real battle in the next few years will be to create a coalition of social conservatives and libertarians who we've sort of been at each other's throats for a while, the Rick Santorumites. But, but not Rick Santorum himself, but the people who maybe who like Rick Santorum. We're going to have to be able to make peace with those people to build a coalition to take on the neocons who are theoretically going to support a, a Chris Christie or a Jeb Bush. So the challenge will be for us to build a coalition with people who we have historically been at odds with. Woo, we have our work cut out for us in that department. <laughs> um, so who do you support? Rand Paul 2016 or are you still, uh, still waiting for each of these candidates to kind of put forth what they uh, all recommend? I'm actually waiting, and the, the, the thing is is that uh, I, have, I make no uh, bones about the fact that I am uh, very much in support of Senator Rand Paul. I do like uh, Rand, and I also like Ted Cruz a little bit. Sometimes I think he tends to side with the dark side on a few things, so I worry about him. But, uh, you know, there's it's a little early to sort of say, oh, I'm on Rand Paul 2016 campaign team. I think that uh, if Rand Paul were to run, and, and, as the field lies as it was, I would definitely be behind him. But here's the thing, you know, Jeb Bush actually is, you know, is someone that has a fantastic record, and so it would if it was an issue where it came down to Jeb Bush versus Hillary Clinton. At this point, I think it would be worth supporting Jeb Bush against Hillary Clinton, just because he's so great on things like immigration. He has a very conservative record. The reason why I think so many libertarians would have a sort of knee-jerk response against Jeb Bush is because his last name is Bush, and we have this bad relationship with uh, his brother George W. Bush. But I'm trying to stay objective, as objective as possible, because to me, I really really don't care about uh, personalities, and I don't care about parties. All I really care about are ideas. And so when the person emerges that most shares my ideas, I will support that person. And uh, if Rand Paul is less libertarian than someone who might emerge with between now and then, I would support the more libertarian of the candidates. Uh, now, there's also the dark horse that you haven't brought up. There's a the chance there's going to be a libertarian party candidate. Now, in the last election, after uh, Ron Paul lost the nomination and Mitt Romney won the nomination, I, Mitt Romney was too hawkish for me, and so I supported the Libertarian Party candidate. Not because I thought he could win, but because for me and my own conscience, I have to sleep at night, and so I supported Gary Johnson. Uh, I wouldn't say that I would do that again this time, just because I think that even if he does run, uh, most likely it would be a waste of time. But I think that uh, if Rand Paul runs, him being the most libertarian of the candidates, I would support him out of uh, the field right now. But uh, my dream ticket, I guess, would be Rand Paul and Ted Cruz. But I'm trying to keep my options open because you never know who might pop up between now and then. That's very true. And, yeah, that's, uh, that Gary Johnson dark horse situation is definitely an interesting 
uh, potential uh, development. Let's hope. You want to hear a little tip? You want to hear a little secret? This is sort of behind the scenes thing. Some people, some people are actually kind of hoping that Governor Gary Johnson might run for president because they want Rand Paul to win. Now, here's the reason why: they think that if people try and paint Rand Paul as a crazy libertarian, then Rand Paul could go, "I'm not a crazy libertarian." That guy is. <laughs> That's actually that would actually be a pretty good tactic. I know that uh, some social conservatives I talk to often would definitely fall for that. So that's good. <laughs> well, cool. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope we can speak again in the future. Thank you very much, Tiffany. Have a great day. You can visit the Libertarian Republic on Facebook or Twitter. We'll also have a discussion about Rand 2016 and the future of liberty on liberty.me/discuss, liberty and I hope to see you there. Everyone, have a great day.